Total War Rome 2 has been whittled and honed into a perfectly decent game now, but its awkward bug filled launch was all too typical of a series whose grand ambition is repeatedly undermined by technical issues and ill thought out mechanics. Built on an improved version of the same engine and developed with the hindsight earned from patching up Rome 2, Attila Total War still has some work to do to restore fan faith in the franchise. Apprehensive after my own disappointment with Rome 2, yet cautiously optimistic at some of the noises coming from Creative Assembly, I grabbed my battle axe and charged into a full grand campaign. So the Romans might remain, but the world's a very different place in Attila. The grand, globe-spanning empire of Rome, though still an impressively gargantuan construct, is beginning to crumble under its own weight. It's split into two factions, the weak and corrupt Western Empire and the slightly more competent, but still pretty precariously balanced Eastern Empire. Knocking on the doors of civilization are several thousand hairy tribesmen, driven south to warmer climes thanks to a vicious, pitiless climate change. The grandeur of the classical age is slipping into the vicious barbarism of the Dark Ages, and it's up to you whether you wish to try and prevent that, or embrace your inner barbarian. This change of atmosphere immediately invests Attila with a welcome sense of foreboding. Rather than a static sandbox, from the off the game's campaign map feels like it's already sliding into chaos. Attila is divided into stages representing the seven seals. Doom laden imagery compounded by the titular barbarians uncanny metaphorical resemblance to the biblical four horsemen. This is an age of violence and death, and Attila takes this ominous atmosphere and runs with it in a way previous Total War games haven't ever really attempted. Thematically, it's the strongest and most cohesive stage that Creative Assembly has ever set in the franchise's history. In the East and West, the Romans begin with sprawling but fragile holdings, while some of the barbarian tribes, the Visigoths for example, start with no structures at all. The Western Roman Empire's starting position is so fragmented and weak, the developers are calling it the first legendary start that they've ever done. If building up a colossal empire from an uncluttered single province start was getting a bit easy for you, this should give you a much sterner test. It's a shake-up that does a fine job of upsetting the familiar status quo, and it invests each faction's struggles with greater weight. The overbearing themes of collapsing societies, brutality and entropy are not simply reflected in those starting positions either. Winters in Attila are deadly affairs, impacting everything from fruit production to army morale. Lose ground to an advancing army and you can even burn your city down and salt the earth, retreating to a safer spot while your opponent's force dies in droves from starvation and hypothermia. It's a fittingly grim alternative to meeting your enemy on the open field. Attila's new disease mechanics didn't really come into play in the preview build I got my hands on, but even without it the world feels like a big unpleasant ball of mud, blood and grime. It's a vastly more interesting place to campaign in than the comparatively bland grasslands of Rome 2. Thanks to a new campaign map camera that lets you zoom up far further than you could in previous games, there's also plenty of opportunity to get a better look at your budding empire and breathe in the plague ridden air. As for the field of battle itself, I wouldn't go so far as to say that the AI is a giant leap forwards, but there's definitely been some improvement. Siege battles in particular work well, with the computer army willing to search out weaknesses and gaps in your defence, and applying the correct units to those situations. The ability to set up barricades to block off vulnerable zones gives a welcome extra level of strategy to city fighting, while added graphical bells and whistles such as dynamic fires caused by errant flame arrows and plumes of smoke and dust from shattered fortifications give the chaos impressive cinematic sheen. On the campaign map, dealings with opposing factions are far less head-bangingly frustrating than they were in Rome 2. Diplomacy is far less arbitrary, and although the vultures are quick to circle as soon as you leave yourself in any way vulnerable, you don't quite get the same level of constant, enthusiastic, yet ultimately pointless betrayal that blighted the previous game. Alliances can even stick this time around, as the Saxons had a healthy trading partnership and military alliance with the neighbouring Jutes, which persisted nicely through 40 turns of gameplay. They even help me out in a couple of nasty scraps. It would be nice if this continues going forwards. Previous Total War games have wasted time developing these in-depth diplomacy mechanics, only to have every single faction stab you in the back at the earliest opportunity. Thanks to the shorter time period, your various generals, spies and statesmen all hang around for a lot longer before popping their clogs. 
This lessens the time you spend recruiting and developing new agents, but despite a return to Shogun 2 style individual character experience trees, there's still not much sense of personality and individuality from your leaders. They're incredibly useful assets of course on the field of battle or the campaign map, but you never feel very invested in their political struggles or their rise through the social ranks, despite the restoration of the family tree that was so popular in Shogun 2. Apparently important political events are cluttered onto the screen alongside straightforward notifications about construction completion and battles fought, and there's little sense that your actions carry much weight. I can praise a loyal general or attempt to secure loyalty from another, but what exactly do I gain from this from a mechanical standpoint? It's all a little vague and half-hearted at the moment, and it's the one area of the game I'm a little disappointed by. Other than that relatively minor issue, the auguries are promising. I went into Attila expecting little more than a kind of Rome 2.5, but after settling into a full campaign, I was pleasantly surprised by how fresh it feels. It's the end of the world theme and almost apocalyptic setting that steals the show, but there are some smart ideas in here that improve the core gameplay that felt so stagnant in the original release version of Rome 2. It helps that so far, and all my digits are firmly crossed here, I've experienced very few bugs in 40 or so turns of the campaign. If Creative Assembly can get this one out of the gate without any serious issues propping up, Total War Attila might just be the return to form that the franchise needs.